A simpleton might ask, if CO2 in our atmosphere is causing climate change, why don't we just put it underground? You idiot, you're a genius. <laughs> Hi everybody, Julian here for DNews. There are a lot of options for curbing CO2 production on the table. My personal favorite being not making any more of it. But as it stands right now, we're still very dependent on energy production methods that pump billions of tons of it into the atmosphere annually. Recently, I made a DNews episode on a method natural gas plants can use to condense their CO2, which makes it easier to pressurize and store it underground. But I wanted to follow up with a look on if that's really a viable option. Right now, the idea is being put into action in Decatur, Illinois by Archer Daniels Midland. They produce over 2,700 tons of CO2 daily as a byproduct of turning corn into ethanol. Now, for the last three years, they've been pressurizing a third of that CO2 and pumping it into sandstone 2,100 meters below the surface. The carbon dioxide is heated to 35 degrees Celsius and pressurized to 9.8 megapascals. At that temperature and pressure, the molecules don't act like a gas, but they don't act like a liquid either. They're what's called a supercritical fluid with properties of both. It can be pumped through a pipe, but when it reaches the sandstone sediment deep underground, it fuses through the pores like a gas. This property lets ADM pump 1,100 liters of carbon dioxide underground a minute. Of course, eventually the sandstone deposit underground will run out of pore space, but right now it's estimated this particular deposit can store centuries of emissions from the upper Midwest. And according to the U.S. Geological Survey, there are enough sandstone sites around the U.S. to store American emissions for 500 years. So great, let's start drilling and filling, right? Well, not so fast, there are possible downsides. Recently, headlines were made when studies showed conclusively that earthquakes in Ohio were becoming more frequent because of hydraulic fracturing. Fracking isn't quite the same as this method of carbon capture and storage, though. Fracking involves pumping water, sand, and other chemicals underground to break rocks and release natural gas. Scientists believe that the water may be causing slippages and hidden faults or providing just enough pressure to induce seismic activity. Now, with this in mind, the USGS is monitoring seismic activity by the Decatur site, and so far, it looks like the storage isn't having negative effects topside. So ADM is planning on scaling up and pumping all their CO2 underground. Even if it works flawlessly here, detractors aren't certain other sites won't be near hidden faults, and we're going to need a lot more places to put the carbon dioxide if this is going to put a dent in how much we make. Thousands more wells like the one in Decatur, in fact. So far, ADM has pumped about a million tons underground, but the U.S. emits over 5 billion tons of it annually. Plus, if the CO2 will find or open cracks in the bedrock above it and seep back out again, the whole exercise is moot. It's not an immediate fix to the problem, and if it ends up causing more damage than it prevents, the plug may be pulled on this form of carbon storage entirely. So for now, it looks like the best solution is to reduce emissions where possible, work towards carbon neutral energy production, and steadily introduce carbon capture and storage to cut down on how much we emit now. CO2 isn't just messing with the environment globally, it can also screw with your brain if you're stuck in a crowded room. Matt's video explains that over here. Have you been affected by earthquakes, either natural or man-made? If you've got a story and want us to look into it, share with us in the comments, and I'll see you next time on DNews.